So there's a lot of confusion around dry shampoo. There's a bunch of questions that I get in my Mannered Mains community, which you guys should come join if you're on your hair or beard growth journey. There's a Facebook group, there's a free app. I'll link everything in the description, I'm not gonna go into it right now. But a lot of the questions surrounding dry shampoo are, is dry shampoo right for me? Is it safe to use? How often should I use it? Is it a replacement for regular shampoo? How do I apply it? So we're gonna answer all of these questions in this video with three really simple steps for how how you can use dry shampoo effectively. So let's start with question number one, who should use dry shampoo? Well, technically everyone can use it, but here are some use cases for people who might prioritize dry shampoo over other people. So if you have naturally greasy hair, if you have a naturally greasy scalp and you don't want to wash your hair every single day, dry shampoo can help you extend the time between your shampoo days. So if you wash, for example, every two days, then dry shampoo can help help you extend it maybe every three to four days. If you sweat daily, maybe you work outdoors in a labor intensive job, maybe you wear helmets for long periods of time, maybe you exercise every day or you live in a really hot and humid environment, dry shampoo can be a really effective tool for you to keep your hair fresh without having to shampoo your hair every single day. So basically it's for anyone who wants to extend a couple days between their wash days, for anyone who doesn't want to shampoo as often as they are, regardless of your hair type. Now, of course, like any hair products, we should look at ingredients, we should look at safety. So let's talk about that for a second. So there's a common ingredient in most dry shampoos that has been under scrutiny sort of for a long time, and that is aluminum starch. So aluminum is also found in antiperspirants in a little bit of a different form. Aluminum in antiperspirants is used as an active ingredient to reduce sweating by temporarily blocking your sweat glands. And aluminum compounds such as aluminum chloride hydrate or aluminum zirconium tetrachlorohydrex form a gel-like plug that sits on top of your sweat glands, reducing the amount of sweat that's released onto the skin surface. It basically plugs those glands and stops you from sweating. It's a little bit of a different function and form of the aluminum that's in dry shampoo. It's not the same type of aluminum. Aluminum in dry shampoo is used as an absorbent ingredient to soak up excess oil and sweat from the hair and the scalp without affecting sweat production. So it doesn't plug your sweat glands. And Common ingredients you might see here are things like, I'm gonna mispronounce this word, aluminum starch, octanyl succinate, and aluminum hydroxide, which are commonly used in dry shampoo formulations because they have a really high capacity for absorbing oils and other impurities on your scalp. So when it comes to ingredient safety, one website that I use constantly is the Environmental Working Group Skin Deep Database. And it's a database where you can basically go in, type any ingredient, view all of the relevant studies on it, and its safety and they basically score every ingredient on a scale from one to 10, one being completely safe and 10 being toxic and hazardous. So if you type aluminum starch, octanyl succinate or aluminum hydroxide, you'll see that they're both actually ranked a one to two, which is incredibly safe to use. So regardless of what any fear mongering blog might say about aluminum in dry shampoo, the scientific evidence just isn't there in terms of danger. Now, if you're still someone who's like, okay, cool, but I'm still not comfortable spraying metal on my scalp, <laughs> don't worry, I'll give you some aluminum free brand options to shop for at the end. Regarding safety, let's also bring up the recent recall from the corporation Unilever. Now Unilever recalled all of their dry shampoos in October 2020. 22 due to elevated levels of benzene, which is a known human carcinogen classified by the EPA to increase risks of leukemia. So the brands that were recalled were brands like Nexus, Dove, Suave, TIGI, Rockaholic, Bedhead, Tresemme, just to name a few. And their statement basically read, based on independent health hazard evaluation, daily exposure to benzene in the recalled products at the levels detected in testing would not be expected to cause adverse health consequences, but out of an abundance of caution, we're just gonna recall everything. <laughs> so they didn't have any reports or any adverse events, but we do know that long-term exposure to benzene is not healthy for humans, so they just went ahead and said, hey, we're gonna recall all of this. Now what's really interesting in this is that 
benzene wasn't on the ingredient list at all. So how did it end up getting into dry shampoos? Because benzene, it's not an ingredient you would use to formulate a dry shampoo. You don't need it to make a dry shampoo. So it's a chemical that may find its way into the can because at a molecular level, it tends to adhere to butane, which is a common propellant that you use in the aerosol-based mechanisms. The butane and isobutane, things like that, is what gives the product that spray power out of the nozzle. So what I believe is actually more important important takeaway here is that there could be trace amounts of benzene in aerosol based products containing butane. That's a big claim to make so I'm not going to go say stop buying aerosol based products with butane because a lot of brands could take extra measures to make sure that there's no benzene. I'm just following the clues that's all I'm doing but Unilever was the one who went public with it and this is why I usually opt for powder based dry shampoos anyways. So let's talk really quickly about how often you should use dry shampoo. This is going to be a little bit dependent on your specific scalp needs needs, but if I had to give it a general number, I would say one time per week is best, no more than twice. Why do I say that? The reason is because dry shampoo is not a shampoo replacement. It is a supplement, right? It's like protein powder versus eating chicken or steak or eggs or something, right? It's a good supplement, but it's not a replacement for the real deal. And dry shampoo isn't actually cleansing your scalp or your hair or moisturizing it like a shampoo or conditioner. It is simply absorbing the sweat and oil in your hair so your hair doesn't look overly greasy. Several dry shampoos also have volumizing ingredients to kind of give it a lift to your roots. So instead of looking flat and greasy, it'll help your hair look balanced and give it a little bit of volume. But if you use too much, it could start to leave a rough film on your hair or white streaks because you're not applying it and rinsing it out like a shampoo, you're leaving it in your hair. So the amount you use is really important. Use it as an extender between shampoo days rather than a replacement for actual shampoo. To do this, I typically recommend using it one time per week. So let's talk about really fast how to apply dry shampoo correctly. If you're using an aerosol based mechanism, the best way to do this, you're gonna just part your hair down the middle like this and just spray it here, part it to the left, spray it here, part it to the right, spray it here, and you can kind of work it through with your fingers or with a detangling brush, something like that. So that's the best way to apply it to your scalp is in section and to help absorb absorb oil all over your hair. You can rub it through with your fingers, which I typically don't recommend that because your fingers could be oily, but you could take a detangling brush or a wooden hair brush and you can sort of just brush it through your hair from your scalp through to your mids and to your ends. So this will prevent it from building up too much on your scalp as well as helping you absorb it just throughout all your hair. Now I wouldn't recommend spraying it directly to your ends because most people's ends dry out quicker than their roots or their mids. And this is because the ends of your hair are open, right? And moisture escapes daily. So instead of applying dry shampoo to absorb the oil, your ends might actually be a little bit dry. So it might be more helpful to actually apply a little bit of oil to the ends of your hair, like a bonding oil to keep your moisture locked in. That's another topic for another video. I'm not gonna go into that here. Now, if you're using a pump mechanism, which is a powder dry shampoo, you would essentially apply it the exact same way. You would part your hair in sections, brushing it through. The only difference would be you know using one to two pumps per section rather than a spray from an aerosol can. The final step in this process is to pick the right brand for you. And the questions we'll try to answer are, one, are you okay with aluminum or do you prefer aluminum free? Do you want an aerosol spray that you know uses butane or isobutane or do you want a powder pump mechanism? And finally, which is a quality dry shampoo that won't leave film on your hair and on your roots? Here are some aluminum free options in both aerosol and non-aerosol formulas that won't leave white streaks in your hair. One of them is Pulp Riot Dry Shampoo. It's a great option if you have fine or medium textured hair. If you have coarse hair, check out the Moroccan Oil Dry Shampoo. Basically, if you have dark or light tones, you can purchase it based on your hair color. Another one is Not Your Mother's Dry Shampoo. I really like that one. I have a travel size that I take with me when I'm traveling and I'm not bringing a bunch of you know shampoo and conditioner with me. If you want a pump powder, my go-tos are typically Odell Dry Shampoo or the Long Hair's Instant Freshies. So those are some great options. I will link to all of those in the description for you to shop at your computer. Convenience. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, comment purple buffalo, just so I know who the real ones are. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.